remote viewing and stock picking. Yes, it works, sort of. As with everything involving magic, there's always a catch, and remote viewing is certainly one of those. The first thing you need to keep in mind is that when you're remote viewing something, you're generally looking at an astral representation or etheric representation of that thing in a time and place. But there's the catch. You see, the astral is in fact a timeless realm. So what you end up looking at is the, mm, let's call it center of gravity for what a thing is. So a good example of this is, if you have a remote viewing assignment to go look at, say, a certain place geographically, it's not uncommon for buildings to appear there while remote viewing that only existed hundreds of years ago because the energy on balance of the place represented that. This in turn complicates the issue of stock picking because you're going to be looking at the remote viewing version of the center of gravity for what that stock represents. Which leads us to the next point. Point number two involving stock picking and remote viewing. Okay, we already talked about how you've got a center of gravity problem with remote viewing because of its astral nature. So how do we get around this? Well, you need a team. And this is the hardest part, some would say, of setting up an operation to do this. Because of the center of gravity issue, and because the astral is a realm that involves sensation and therefore emotion, your personal biases can directly impact how you perceive what is going to happen with a given stock. So, what can you do about this? Well, as I just mentioned, if you have a team of people involved in the process, this group of people can hopefully overcome their individual biases as a group. Now, of course, if you're going to put a team together, this, like any other enterprise involving human beings, gets a little tricky, because now you have to find people who are all actually good at this kind of work. If not, what you can do instead is simply train them. And keep in mind, there are some apps available on both iPhone and Android that teach you the technique of remote viewing. But again, just as if you were conducting a medical study or any other effort where personal opinion can flavor the results, you're going to need a group of people to work with in order to minimize the individual biases involved in looking at something. Now also keep in mind that individual biases can build over time. So you may want a continual rotation of people where you don't necessarily work with the same people each time. In fact, where you bounce the results of two teams off of each other might actually be the optimal way to do this. So again, there's no easy pass when it comes to remote viewing and the financial markets. Item number three when it comes to remote viewing and stock picking. First off, this is a full-time job. If you are managing a team full of people and evaluating their individual performance and consolidating their results, well, that's not something you're doing on the fly in your grandmother's basement. Additionally, aside from the basic management issues of team performance, which are inherent to any organization, because keep in mind if you want to do this, you will be building an organization. You also have the issue of the basic skills involved in finance and day trading. This is, as some would indicate, a rather complex art, and it's going to take you time to develop those skills. You're also going to have to develop those skills with the other people in your group. So again, you need to realize that there's the remote viewing part of the equation, which you have to be good at to make this work, but then there's all the other things involving the financial markets that you also have to be aware of, such as when to short, when to hold, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it doesn't get any easier. So again, if you're going to use remote viewing to pick stocks, you need to know a lot about the stock market and finance in general so you can make those basic decisions involved good ones. 
Item number four when it comes to remote viewing and stock picking. The best way to look at remote viewing and stock picking is as an aid to something like day trading. It's going to be that extra 10% because here's the truth of the matter. Human organizations are fallible. Group opinions can norm and people end up running off in weird tangents even if you have controls in place to present that. So even with the well-trained group of people whose performance you're constantly managing in order to guarantee they're doing this correctly and who've been properly trained, make mistakes all the time. For those of you who've worked in either a corporate or military setting, this is something you're very familiar with. We got the best possible minds together to solve a problem and it still didn't work. Maybe that's because one personality in the group bullied everybody else into compliance. Or maybe you were just dealing with something very novel, so the old way of doing things, which is normally very predictable, didn't really work in this set of circumstances. So instead of looking at remote viewing and stock picking as a way of hitting it out of the park every single time, instead, look at it as a way of improving your odds over time. Because even a 5 or 10% improvement in performance over time, again, over time, can result in some pretty amazing results. So keep that in mind that it's the magic 10% that makes the difference between a mediocre or failing player and somebody who does very well. Now finally for my favorite fifth item involving stock picking and remote viewing is keep in mind, given the opportunity, the authorities slash the man will in fact crush you. You see, here's the thing. Governments aren't stupid. They're well aware that there are ways of tweaking your perception of reality, some of which can be quite profitable. Now, while they don't have a problem with big hedge funds or the people who run, I don't know, things like say an S&P 500 index fund getting over on everyone else, they do have a big problem with individuals or small groups of people getting over on everybody else. So here's the issue you're going to run into. If you start successfully picking swings in stocks in niche areas that are in multiple areas, the people in charge of finance in your country are going to come talk to you. And again, they know to look for this stuff. So at the end of the day, they're just going to end up taking all the money you made away from you. I have it on good authority. I haven't talked, having spoken to many people in the, remote, in the remote viewing community, that the only thing they're allowed to pick on are index funds. If they start choosing individual stocks, sooner or later they get caught and their money gets confiscated. Notice I said confiscated. It's probably not going to be a court case involved. They're just going to quote unquote nail you. Now, that's on the official side of things. All right, well, what about Forex? What about, I don't know, Sportsbook? Couldn't those be made to work? Yes, but here's the thing. The people in charge of that kind of trading, if you will, if you consider Sportsbook to be a way of trading, can just ban you. And you see this with people who learn how to count cards in places like Las Vegas or other big gambling hubs. Sooner or later, they figure out who those people are and they simply ban them from the premises. So if you're going to go through all the effort to do all of this, you need to be very careful about how you go about doing it, or sooner or later, you're going to get caught and your accounts are going to be confiscated. Now, if you like the topic of today's discussion, please give us a like down below and consider subscribing to the channel. And you can hop on over to 60skills.com where we discuss all kinds of things. Otherwise, as per usual, train hard, and be well.